All right, so we're going to talk about net ionic equations, which is actually an extension of double, uh, double replacement reactions. So let's go into detail on what exactly is happening when you have a double replacement reaction. Okay, so double replacement reaction is when two uh, ionic compounds come together and switch partners, right? So um, typically what you have it is it's in an aqueous solution, meaning that these compounds are in water and making solutions. So let's take, for example, we have sodium hydroxide. We put it, when we put it in water, it actually breaks up into its ions. We have a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. The same thing happens with all um, ionic compounds, but let's, uh, let's reiterate that with copper 2 chloride. Put that in a solution, or in water to make a solution, and we have one copper ion, one copper plus two, and two chloride ions in the, in the beaker. Okay, great. What does that mean now? Um, all right, so let's say we put we um, added to these two beakers together to see what would happen. Well, most of the time you're going to have a precipitate, and a precipitate is a solid form or solid pieces within that solution. So some sort of solid will actually happen. Um, you probably have a, a solubility chart that your teacher might have given you that tells you what what is uh, what actually makes a precipitate. A, sim a simpler way of writing precipitate instead of having to write the whole word is PPT. So you might see that actually in the future too. So this actually means precipitate. These words are pretty important also. Um, within this reaction, uh, this is going to still be aqueous, and this is going to be our actual precipitate. Uh, this is going to be our solid that's going to actually be formed. So we're going to say NaCl, the, the product, is soluble, meaning it is dissolvable in the solution. It will break up into its ions. It will still be in solution. This is going to be insoluble, meaning that it's going to be the precipitate, meaning it's going to be the solid of, that re of this reaction. This is actually going to stay together. So let's write this out more accurately to describe exactly what is happening. So we look at the complete ionic reaction. We're going to break this up. Um, we don't like it together because we know that they separate in solution, as we've mentioned earlier. So instead of writing NaOH, I'm going to write Na plus an OH minus. OK? Then I'm going to break this up into its ions also because it's broken up. It's an aqueous solution. So we're going to say it's Cu plus 2 plus two chloride ions. This two comes out, we have two of these guys, two chloride ions. It's going to produce salt, which we said is soluble, it's in an aqueous solution. Um, it's going to be broken up into its ions, Ca plus, Na plus plus Cl minus. Um, and this is a solid, so it stays together. We're going to say it's CuOH2. Now, actually, I actually forgot to balance the original equation, so we're going to have to go back and make sure this is balanced so we can, uh, we can, make, we can do it properly. Okay, so there's two chlorine. Uh, let's go back up here. There's two chlorines. There needs to be two chlorines here, which means I have two sodiums, two sodiums there, two hydroxides, two hydroxides. This is balanced. This will also change our net ionic, or sorry, our complete ionic equation. We'll have to put a two here. We have two of these guys, both of them. This two will tell me I have two of these and two of these. Okay, so now it's balanced. This is helpful. Okay, so now we have this long equation. This is actually a much more accurate description of what is actually happening in the reaction. Then we go into something called spectator ions. When you think of the word spectator, you might think of like a basketball game. You, when you watch a basketball game, you're a spectator of that basketball game, right? If you go to like a Wizards game, um, you would be a, a spectator at that Wizards game. You wouldn't actually be involved in that Wizards game. You're not affecting the outcome of that Wizards game. You're actually just there watching the event happen. That's what these spectator ions are the exact same way. Okay? They're just watching the reaction take place. They're just spectators. They don't really do anything. They don't affect the outcome of the actual reaction. So what do I mean by that? What's a spectator ion? Okay, well, um, there are ions on both sides of the reaction. They haven't changed. So for example, we have a sodium ion here and a sodium ion here. That's a spectator. We can actually cross that guy out. He is not doing anything in this reaction. Then we have hydroxide ion. We don't have one over here, so we can't, that's not a spectator. We have copper over here. We don't have copper over here, so that's not a spectator. We have two chloride ions, and yet we have two chloride ions here. That guy's the same on both sides. He's a spectator. He's just watching the event happen. He's not real, he's not important. So then we have our leftovers, and this is what we got, get to our net ionic equation, our net ionic reaction. So let me just bring those down, and I'm going to say 2OH minus plus Cu plus 2 gives me CuOH2. Um, and we're going to make sure this is our solid. This is our net ionic reaction. This is what actually is happening within this reaction. So let's take this um, and go up and do this one more time.
<clears throat> just to make sure that we understand. Okay. An aqueous solution of aluminum chloride and sodium hydroxide react to form solid aluminum hydroxide. All right, let's break this up into its, to its overall reaction. So we have aluminum chloride, we know this is Al plus 3 uh, and Cl, and this is a minus. So when they actually make their compound, it's going to be AlCl3, and we know it's an aqueous solution, so we're going to write Aq. Okay. Um, we have to sodium hydroxide. We have sodium, which we know is Na. This is plus. Hydroxides and OH minus. So together, they're just going to be NaOH. And this is an aqueous solution also. Reactive form of solid. And this tells us what our precipitate is, aluminum hydroxide. So we know aluminum hydroxide is uh, going to come together. This is Al plus 3 OH and a minus. So it's going to be Al OH3. And then we have another product. Um, so we did the outside ones. We're going to do the inside ones. It's Na and Cl is left over. So we can just say NaCl. And this is our aqueous. This, does, this is a insoluble, or sorry, soluble. OK, so let's balance this equation. Make sure it's balanced correctly. We have one aluminum, one aluminum, three chlorines. Let's make three chlorines here. Um, that means three sodiums. Let's do three sodiums on this side, making it three hydroxides. Three hydroxides, good. Great, it's balanced. All right, so let's do our complete ionic reaction. We have to break it down. Don't forget, aqueous solutions need to be broken down into its ions. So let's do that. We have Al plus 3 plus 3 Cl minus ions plus 3 Na plus ions plus 3 OH minus ions yields. This is our solid. We're going to keep this together. AlOH3. And then this is aqueous, so we're going to break that up. Okay, so now we have to find our spectators again. So what would, which ones are our spectators, meaning they're the same on both sides? Well, I have three NAs over here and three NAs over here. I cross those guys out. Three chlorides here, three chlorides here. I cross those guys out. Now we're left over. This is our net ionic equation. Ta-da, we're done. Um, Al plus 3 plus 3 OH minus yields Al OH 3. This is our solid, so precipitate. Uh, it's completely balanced. We're looking good. Awesome. Um, the one type of double replacement reaction that you might see or that you can put into an ionic equation is what we call a neutralization reaction. This is also a double replacement reaction. The reason we call it neutralization is because we have an acid, our, our um, bromic acid, hydrobromic acid, sorry. Then we have sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, which is our base. So together, an acid and a base is going to be neutral, meaning it has a pH of 7. Um, so this is what we call a neutralization reaction. So let's do that um, when they trade places or actually have the reaction occur. The H is going to be now with the OH. So HOH is another way of, a funny way of writing water. So I'm just going to write water. And how many see HOH? Is, it's water. And then you have sodium, um, sodium and bromide, bromide come together. Okay. So whenever we have water, this is actually a liquid. Water is not aqueous. Water is what's aqueous. It's a liquid solution. Okay? So not a solution. It's just a liquid. It's in liquid state. So this guy, anything that's not aqueous is going to stay together. Only thing that breaks apart is aqueous. If you have gas, that stays together. If you have liquid, it stays together. Okay, so water is going to stay together. This actually is aqueous. It's going to break up. So let's do it. H plus plus Br minus. Do we make, do we make sure it's balanced? Yeah, it's balanced. Br minus plus Na plus plus OH minus yields H2O. We're keeping it together because it's a liquid. And NaBr. Na plus and Br minus. We break up. We uh, cross out our spectators. Br is a spectator. Uh, Na is a spectator. So we're left with H plus plus OH minus yields H2O as our final reaction. This is common also. This can totally be an ionic equation and be just fine. Don't forget to include that's a liquid. And uh, that's pretty much how you do net ionic equations.